Hello and welcome back. It's time to start turning our attention to implementing the profile page, which is designed to be a protected page. Let's get started straight away. In our front end folder, you can create a new file. We can call this profile.html. Hit enter and we've got a brand new page. So we can use our code from the, the login just to get the basic boilerplate, copy that over, paste it in. But just everything in the, the body tags, you can just delete that for now and hit enter. And in your browser, you can just then, because we don't have a link or button to this, we can just hard code uh, the profile.html in the, the URL there. And you can hit enter and you can see we've got nothing on the page at this stage. So let's put a simple h1 tag in there and we'll call this dashboard. And then in here, let's just have a, a p tag Let's give it a class of user info. Let's just put something in here like John for now. And so the idea is we want to, on this page, display that sensitive user information that from our user endpoint that we've locked down in our API. Uh, we'll use this p tag to kind of inject the, the values we get back from the API in a later lesson. For now, this can just be a placeholder. Now it's time to start thinking about exactly what we're trying to accomplish with this page. The idea is if anyone tries to navigate to this profile.html file, we want to have some type of logic that's going to evaluate, wait, hold on, is this user who's accessing this page allowed to access the page? If they are not, let's kick them back to the login page. If they are, then let's make the, the call to the API endpoint. So to do this, we're going to be using some JavaScript in the browser here. To implement that uh, code, we need to uh, set up um, a, a script tag here to, to link to a JavaScript file. And so to do this, we can, in our, in our front end folder, we can create a new file. We will call this profile.js. And I'm just going to write a simple alert here. And I just want to test, I like to test that my JavaScript is linked correctly to the HTML file. And to, to link the file underneath the, the paragraph tag there, you can use the script tag. And for the source, we'll assign that to the value of profile.js. And we'll reference that file that's in the same level in the directory. And you can see as soon as I hit save here, that alert does come up saying testing. And we know for sure now that our JavaScript file is indeed linked to our, our profile.html file. The last thing I want to do just to kind of make the, the flow of this work is in the, the index.html file. So we want to make this login, when a user clicks on this login button, it's going to go to the, the profile page. Then we're going to rely on the, the JavaScript in the profile.js to do those evaluations on whether the, the user is authenticated or not. So to do this, I'm just going to give us a little bit more space in our button element here. And I'm going to make use of an href tag and we're going to link that to the profile.html. We can just move this login copy there into that tag. And let's go ahead and just go back to our root of our application. You can see because we're using that href, it's just um, styled that a little bit differently. That's all right for now. All I, we want to do is like, if we click on this login, it's going to take us to the profile page. You'll see that the page is hanging now and we've got that alert popping up. So this is exactly where we want our JavaScript to execute. We want our JavaScript to check if the user is authenticated. If they are, let's go make that API call. If they're not, let's send them back to the login. So I'm just going to hit OK here. Uh, you can see we've landed on our, our profile page, even though the user is not authenticated. So, so let's start writing the JavaScript to, to make this work. The way we're going to do this is we will remove this alert here, and we're going to use the window.onload. And this is a property that's going to run a function that we can set up and that code in the function block. And it will run every time this page is loaded or is kind of like navigated to in our application. So we're going to say window.onload equals and then we'll just assign this a function. And for now, all I want to do is set up a debugger in here. And I've, I've saved our work, but in order to get that debugger or like to hit that debugger, we need to make use of the, the Chrome Dev tools. So you can just right click and um, head on over to inspect. We can just give ourselves a little bit more space here. I'm going to make sure that I enlarge this so that you can see what we're doing. And now if I reload this page, you'll see that we, we get this um, paused in debugger message in our browser and in the sources tab of our Chrome DevTools. 
you'll see that we are now got a live debugging session available to us. And this is a perfect point where I wanted to kind of stop the code or the execution of the code so that we can start taking a look at what exactly we're trying to achieve here. So this window.onload function has indeed been run. It's then passed the, the execution onto this block of code here. We've just got this debugger. And so what we want to do here is we want to check if the user has been authenticated or not. As I mentioned in the beginning of this module, we're going to be using a mechanism that is purely just for this demonstration. In uh, more complex JavaScript applications, we would check the state in whatever state management or context that you're using and check if the, the user has been authenticated previously or not. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to leverage the session storage that's available to us in the browser. If you head on over to the application tab, you'll see there's a whole lot of options here. There's a whole section dedicated to storage. There's local storage, session storage, cookies, and all of that good stuff. For now, we wanna take a look at this session storage, and you'll see there is a possible list of key value pairs here. So what we're gonna do eventually is have this key, which will say is authenticated, and then the value will be either true or false. And so we can literally in our browser just add that here. While we have our debugger paused here, I want to show you how you can access this through your JavaScript code. And so I just want to access the, the console in our dev tools here. The way you can do this is just say show console draw. It's going to exit out of that what's new. And then once you have a console here, you can just type in the JavaScript. And so we can take a look at the session storage. You can see as I start typing, it's got IntelliSense and you can just hit tab over there to type out that session storage. And if you hit enter, you're gonna see that in the storage, we've got that key value pair is authenticated is um, indeed true. So what we wanna do is write some JavaScript to look for that is authenticated key, evaluate whether um, it's true or false. And based on that, then we can direct the user to wherever it needs to be. Again, like I said, this is not how you do this in production applications. This is not safe at all. The reason being is in whoever has got like access to your JavaScript or inject JavaScript into the browser. And even from the, the console here, you can just literally say session storage, and then we can clear the session storage if we wanted to. I've cleared the terminal there, but let's go ahead and just remove um, the, these key value pairs. You can do that by clicking this delete button there. And then back in the console, if we take a look at the session storage, you'll see that it's empty, there's nothing in it. And we can go ahead and then purely in our JavaScript, we can use this set item function here, and then we can pass in whatever key we want. And because we know what key we're looking for here, we can just say is authenticated, and then we can just put in the value of um, true there. And sorry, that's my mistake. I see we do get an error there. This just needs to be a string. It was looking for a, a locally scoped variable. But anyway, if I hit enter there, you'll see if we relook at our session storage, you'll see now that this is authenticated uh, key is there and it's got a value of true. Uh, we can just hit play here just to continue with our JavaScript. Let's get back into our code and start writing the JavaScript to, to do these conditional checks. Okay, so I'm going to remove this debugger and we're gonna get started and we're just going to set up a simple if conditional. All we need to do here is we need to say if not session storage. So that's the exact same uh, keyword or key that we were referencing in our Chrome dev tools. And then we're gonna say get item. And for this get item function, you just need to pass in the key as a string. So we'll say is authenticated for that expression to, to pass, it needs to find a key value pair is authenticated and the value needs to be set to true in order to get into this conditionals code block here. And then for now, let's just say um, alert and we'll say access denied. And let's just test this out in our, our browser. I'm gonna go back to our login page. We're gonna hit login here and you'll see that we indeed did not get this alert function at all. And that is because our application still has this is authenticated true there. So let's just clear that out. And just to step through our code here, I'm gonna leave the debugger in here so we can see what's going on. When I hit save, the page reloads, the unload property calls this function. If we take a look at our application, we've got all our session storage, we have no key value pairs in there. We can just step over here. And so now 
that we've removed that key, it should hit this alert. And I indeed, if I step over, it does evaluate to false here. So it's going to then say and pop up that access denied alert there. So that's great. Uh, let's remove that debugger. We can see that in action again. All we want to do after that alert is then uh, redirect the user to uh, the, the login page. And we can do that by saying window.location.href. And then we'll just send them through to uh, index.html. And so if I hit save there, you can see our pop-up has, or our alert has popped up there. If I click OK, it's going to send the user back to the login page. At this stage, it indeed sends them to the login page. We can then try this from clicking on this login. We get the pop-up access denied sends us back to the login page. So that's the, the mechanism that we can use. Uh, let's just mock the situation where a user is logged in. So we can just add this key in here. We'll say is authenticated. And then we'll give that a value of true. And then now if we click login here, you'll see it goes onto the dashboard, no problem. Um, if we remove this, go back to the login, click login, access denied, sends us back. So. That's the mechanism we're going to be used. We've done our first little bit of uh, JavaScript here. I think we've got the basic building blocks of our whole front end application in place now. Uh, now it is time to start doing our integrations into our API, get this whole thing working end to end. In the next section, we will dive deep into the JavaScript, write our fetch requests, handle all the errors, all the good stuff. Uh, we'll run into some, some cause errors, which we'll take a look at. Well done on making it this far. Like I said, we've set the foundation and in the next section, we will finish our front end application. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.